Oh, hey, so uh, good afternoon, everyone who is virtually connected with us this afternoon. And we hope you are enjoying very much web so far. My name is Olga, and I will be the moderator for this session. And for today, we're going to have a special online virtual tour from CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. And we are very grateful to have with us today various members of the CERN team. And I would like to introduce you to our guides this afternoon, Sara, Abdallah, and Sima. And also many thanks to the technical assistance team for helping us with this session, um, Zoltan and Naomi. Okay, thank you, Olga. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Abdullah Ibrahim, I'm a PhD student in computing at the University of Bahrain. I'm doing my uh, PhD thesis here as a collaboration with CNS at CERN. And uh, my colleagues here will join me today for this uh, visit. <laughs> so, uh, hello, everyone. I am Farah Abbas. I'm from Lebanon. Uh, I'm an undergraduate uh, computer and communication engineering student at the American University of Beirut. And I am doing a 12-month internship here at CERN with the computing team at CMS as a software developer. And uh, today, it's my pleasure to join you with, uh, in this uh, virtual visit, of course. And our third uh, guide, Shayma. Uh, so can you hear me well? Mm -hmm. No, no, we don't hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I am. Uh, okay, I am Shaima Abu Zaid. I am assistant professor of physics at uh, Ain Shams University in Egypt, but nowadays I am also a boss doctor in uh, INFN uh, uh, Institute in Italy. Uh, I am a physicist, so feel free to. Uh, but also I'm sharing in uh, some. Uh, technical uh, um, tasks in the detector side. So feel free to ask either about uh, the physics or the technical issue. We have two engineers here also. And we have also Zoltan and Naomi, they are also physicists and they doing uh, the production team. So they are behind the camera, but they are the, who is uh, produce and organize these uh, visits. Uh, thanks for them and the, the facilities they uh, and the tools they use for us. So we can start. So now we are here in the control room of the CMS experiment. So welcome at CMS experiment in the at CERN. So CMS is a, is a abbreviation of compact main solenoid detector. It's a, one of the biggest uh, experiments at CERN. And here is the control room. Uh, where we can operate and uh, control the detector when the PP collision uh, happens. So can I can just, uh, you can see in the, the uh, Zoltan, can you see? Uh, okay, we can see here the LHC, uh, which is a large hadron collider, where we, uh, the, the protons uh, have been accelerated uh, up to now for round three is 13.6 tera electron volt. But uh, uh, there is many uh, steps before this uh, energy. Um, my colleagues will explain more when I'm going downstairs. So, but uh, when the, uh, the, these protons uh, collide, they produce a lot of uh, particles, high energetic particles, and they, then we can, uh, uh, we want to uh, detect them and they, uh, um, study what is the physics behind, and then we can, uh, uh, is, know what's happened actually after the Big Bang where the world or the universe was such a very uh, little or very tiny particles, uh, uh, which we, we call the quarks and leptons. So for that, we need some uh, special camera. What we say, this is very, very high uh, resolution camera, but in this is what we say in the, for the public, but for physicists, we know that our cameras, our eyes is the detectors. 
So we use different kind of detectors and different te technologies that you, I think you study in your, uh, in your undergraduate or postgraduate studies, like uh, this, uh, the basic uh, um, uh, uh, types of detector uh, uh, and the mix between gas and the semiconductor and scintillation detector and build up uh, big experiments we will see together uh, down the stair, but here to, uh, to control and the, see everything going uh, fine and the analyze the data afterward, we need to control this by very uh, big uh, uh, control, uh, uh, control team. So as you see uh, in my background, the, here we are in the control room of the CMS. And actually the CMS control room is divided in two main parts. Here we are in the main part where we can see the shift leader who can, who is the, like the leader of the, all the team inside the control room. And here is the second uh, important uh, uh, shifter here. It's uh, the technical shifter. And you can see how many cameras he can, uh, uh, he has to take care of it, of it and uh, see each detector, how it behaves. And if there is any problem uh, fastly, he can uh, call the experts who will see in the other in the other part of the control room so uh, this uh, actually it's like the the every day we have uh, three teams uh, each team takes uh, care of the detectors for eight hours and they collaborate together cooperate together and uh, to have a successive uh, a shift and then delivers the good data for the physicists and scientists to analyze and then you have the these new results and if we discover a new thing we can have the Nobel prize like what happened in 2012 for Higgs boson so the other part of the of the control room here is the expert of the sub detectors as i said uh, for you that uh, we have different uh, kind of detectors sub detectors uh, that uh, change between semiconductors, scintillation, and uh, gas detectors. And here you can see like different, uh, all these screens is actually is a sub system uh, control area. And here the expert to sit down to uh, see the technicality of the detectors and be sure that everything is going fine. Then uh, we will go down the stair and uh, at that moment, uh, I will give the chance to my colleagues on the surface because we will take some time to go down the stair. Then they will can, uh, uh, they can explain for you more about the LHC and the, about the, how the data are delivered and analyzed and they, we will re return back again to you. Okay, thank you, Shema. <clears throat> Uh, so as just say, Shema said, uh, we are here in the control room. Can you show the slides now? Thank you. So we are uh, on uh, this side of the LHC uh, uh, circle. Uh, our offices are on this side, the other side, the opposite side. And uh, we have our uh, uh, sister experiment here, Atlas. So as just Simon said, uh, the CMS is basically something like a, a big uh, camera. Uh, can I think I... you can just simply pull it down. Yeah, this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is the accelerator complex that we have. As just Shaima said, we uh, accelerate the protons to speeds close to the speed of light on multiple stages. And uh, what I like about this image here, what I want to emphasize here that uh, each stage oh, here is basically historical uh, okay. stage. Uh, so there are some old uh, stages where uh, we were able to accelerate the photos to some uh, speed, for example, starting from the 50s, the late 50s going to the 70s. Uh, 1999 and uh, now with the LSC at 2008. So this is a process that took a uh, very long time and it was uh, built by many engineers and scientists. And you could be the next scientist that contribute to these efforts uh, here with us. Uh, this is how it looks like. We, the actual 
accelerator and detectors is below the ground. It's 100 uh, meters yes. below the ground. Yeah, 100 meters. And it's uh, 27 uh, kilometers in uh, circumference. Yes. Uh, Before we would go ahead, yeah. uh, I would like to show how Shima goes through the Okay. Back to Shima. Yeah. Okay, so now we are in the front of the gate to going down the stair, but I would like to show you those, uh, this huge picture, which like, like a small part of the physicist and engineer we have in the, in the CMS. And this is, uh, is a part of the, and the message of the CERN. It's not only science but also collaboration between different people from coming from different cultures and different uh, different languages but uh, all of us are here just to, to to do science to do research and this is also one of the messages could be delivered by the scientists is that we are not only producing the science but also we uh, we show peace and how people should collaborate together uh, here in CERN, we, we don't care about nationality, about language, about uh, uh, even worship. It's uh, all about science. So this is really one of the best places uh, I really love uh, to see that it's because actually some of them now they are not here anymore. And some of them left uh, to other places, but they will still remember these people and how they add to the knowledge of the even the, the students and to the life as well. So now we will go down the stair, but one thing we should, we can uh, also show for you that no, not everyone can come from outside, even they are physicists in CERN, can go down the stair without the permission. And for this permission, we have some training, some safety. So, so it's a, a process and then it's approved that you can go down the stair to keep safety for yourself at the first, to the, the other people and to the universe. So for the safety reason and for all of this, we check and uh, we go with the dosimeter, this personal dosimeter to measure. Of course, you know that uh, it's used to measure the radiation that we will expose to down the stair. So there is also a machine here when we can, uh, we want to do uh, also uh, measure how much radiation we uh, we we got when we are down the stair, and it's also this data is treated by the uh, radiation protection team here at CERN. So here we just uh, maybe you see it in the movie. So first we go with uh, with this, and then I will go with the biometry. Yeah, we have to wait until Noemi yeah, goes through. Mm -hmm. But Shima, you can you can keep talking. Okay, so here I am going inside the. Uh, so uh, I'm just waiting until Naomi comes with the camera. So she is coming. So here, uh, where we go to to down the stairs. Hi, Zakaria, one of our radiation. Okay, we, we lost them as usual. <laughs> so I just uh, so we give you back. We yeah. might lose connection with Shaima from time to time because she is going to the elevator now. So, Sarah. Uh, okay, let's uh, continue where we left. We yes. were uh, discussing the LHC. So uh, the LHC um, is built 100 meters underground. Uh, it's uh, between the borders of both France and uh, Switzerland. And it's uh, 27 kilometers long in circumference. And uh, as my colleagues uh, previously mentioned, we have four main experiments. No. Um, uh, did anyone say anything? No, Shima is back uh, 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 online, but okay. uh, I think you can continue and then we can leave you. Okay. okay. So now we will go down the stair. We can. Uh, well, okay. We uh, you can go. They will go, and we can see how uh, it looks like. So now we are in the zero level. Our colleagues will take the elevator, and you see now how where they will be will go. 
So now they are still in the surface. And as you see, this is how many meters they are far from the ground. So now we, yeah, it's going, uh, we will know where they are now when they stop. <laughs> so, and then uh, in this area, actually, this is one of the safest places. If anything or emergency needed, we can uh, go to this. Can you center me? And of course, Shima, it's good to mention here that when we okay. have an evacuation um, uh, status, it's uh, safest to go up uh, via the yes. elevator than uh, stairs, because of course, you yes. want to go yes. up 100 meters from underground uh, with stairs. It's okay. safest here to go uh, with the elevator. So back again. So now our colleagues, they are going to minus level minus one. So they are 82.4 meters downstairs. Uh, and then we will take the elevator. So now we are waiting here to come up again. And then we, uh, we will continue. So go ahead, Sarah, until we uh, reach our uh, level. OK, thank you, Shayma. Uh, so back to. Um... CMS. CMS is one of the largest uh, experiments here um, uh, at CERN, but of course it's not the largest. The largest is our sister Atlas, but this experiment is the compact, as its name uh, suggests. Uh, however, it is uh, the heaviest. It weighs, uh, the CMS detector weighs uh, about 14,000 tons, mm -hmm. uh, which is approximately equal to two uh, Eiffel Towers, uh, which is amazing. I mean, just imagine that we needed a 14,000 ton detector to measure the collision between two protons, where, where one proton uh, weighs, I will give the ground to Zoltan, he's the physicist. <laughs> What's the... One gram over the uh, Avogadro number. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is really, very small, yeah. really amazing. Yes. And uh, yes, the detector is um, 15 uh, meters in height and in width and 21.5, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in length, uh, approximately, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's something like it uh, gets bigger. By here, here we have a here yeah. we have a length number. I think it's and better I think to, it, to I think it, it gets ah, bigger okay. also over time because you keep we keep adding more uh, equipment yes, to it and definitely. more detectors. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. On on this drawing, we have only three end cap layers. Now we have the fourth Ooh, one. Yes, this yeah. is an experiment. This is a constantly changing yeah, uh, yeah. equipment. There is a question here about the safety. We partially answered it. What are safety measures in case of emergency for mm -hmm. workers? So first of all, to go down, to get permission to go down, you go through multiple trainings about how uh, to follow the security measures, how to evacuate, how to use uh, uh, certain uh, rescue masks uh, and multiple different uh, uh, trainings, radiation training, basic radiation trainings, and if you are going to be exposed or to work directly with the equipment, you have to be, you have to get specific training for these uh, projects or equipment. For example, if you are going to operate a laser, you have to be trained uh, to operate a laser and so on. Uh, so safety is very important issue. We are wearing masks here because it's a mandatory in the uh, control room, uh, which is a safety issue <laughs> because yeah. of COVID. Uh, as you've seen, Shaima is wearing her uh, dosimeter. This is, this is the dosimeter. Yes, basically this uh, small device measures the radiation that you are exposed to when you are uh, going down. And uh, we have to give a reading to the uh, safety team through special devices uh, all around the place at least once a month uh, and it is uh, the amount of radiation that people get exposed to here is very very small uh, if you fly by the plane uh, you get more radiation from the uh, uh, cosmic radiations uh, more than what you will get from the detector if you are here yeah. 
at least uh, you go and buy this operation. <laughs> but nobody is allowed to go and if, if uh, there are collisions and going. Yeah. I think Olga also, has a yeah. question. Yeah. Olga? Uh, this is, I think, Shema. Hello. O o yes. Olga has this a question. question from Safa. How much power do you use and where does it come from? Uh, you mean, okay, so may I can uh, re yes, re rephrase the, the question? What do you mean? Uh, 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 of course, you hear me. So, what do you mean by a power? You mean that what's how much power we use to operate all the accelerator chain just explained by Abdullah and uh, Sara, or which kind of of energy we we deliver to the proton? Sorry. I guess both. Yeah. I saw the question. Uh, I guess both. Yes. Okay. So actually, we uh, for the elect for the protons to get the protons. So it's not uh, come from zero up to thirteen point six TeV once time. So as mentioned, I think by Abdullah and Sara during I am going down that uh, there is uh, acceleratory change. So first we have to produce protons and this is like by balsed ion source where we have the hydrogen gas and the ionize, by simple ionization, we extract the electrons and then we have the protons. At that moment, we give the energy for uh, about 1.4% of the speed of light, the protons are this kind of energy, and it's go to the linear accelerator to get more energy, and it's now about 50 uh, mega electron volts, and then it's go out and go to the most, the, it's like the real uh, reshape of the Protons because as uh, when they uh, come out from Linux, they start they still in a beam, but we need for the collision to have punches. So to create punches, we after the Linux they are entering the proton synchrotron poster, and this uh, a kind of synchrotron, a small synchrotron, where uh, it create it back the protons into punches, and uh, it's emitted uh, or ejected. Uh, this accelerator, it is a space gap between them, either uh, 25 nanosecond or 50 nanosecond. Uh, and then it's go uh, again to another a bigger synchrotron and then to the super uh, proton synchrotron when they have like uh, uh, 450 mega uh, GeV. And then at that moment, we uh, go uh, insert them or make deflect them to go inside the large hadron collider, but in two different in opposite direction. So they start to be accelerated with with um, with the effect of the electric field and the the, the very uh, big uh, and the strong magnetic field created by the uh, magnetic di uh, uh, superconductor uh, magnetic dipole and all. Also, there is another important thing that we need to have really sharp uh, uh, beam of the proton. So there is something we call the squeezing. And this is my, like we, either we have this uh, not big beams that we try to make them very intense. Then we have all the, the protons coming as, as much possible uh, collision in the certain, in, uh, in a, uh, a, uh, a very uh, like, a bit of second, and then uh, they collide at the, with the center of mass energy. So we have two beams coming uh, uh, on opposite sides. Each of them have the energy of uh, uh, 6.8 uh, tera electron volt. And then when they collide, so the rest of the center of mass energy will become 13.6 tera electron volt. For each stage about the power that we use, it's depend which facility we use it. so it's like the the work condition is the it's like going from uh, stage to stage but we can say that the power consumption by CERN it's uh, it's estimated to be to have all the say the services at CERN even the uh, the LHC it's estimated to be like one city of the of uh, of the France so it's yes it's consumed. Uh, power, a lot of power, but to create 
uh, such uh, protons and uh, destroy the protons. This is known that if you want to destroy the nucleus, you have you need energy, high energy, and imagine to destroy the protons because you destroy the protons to quarks, so we need even more power to uh, uh, this, uh, destroy these protons and the, uh, get it uh, into quarks and the gluons, which we call bartons. So uh, is it enough for I the know, question? I know a, a number uh, okay, that's you can. Uh, going around it. That's something like 200 megawatts. Uh, okay, so if everything is on, including my, my desk lamp and my computer, <laughs> Uh, yes. together with the LHC and all the accelerator complex. This corresponds mm -hmm. to something like a, a city with uh, 500,000, 200,000 inhabitants. So almost Geneva. Almost Geneva. So yeah. it is not a big thing. It's not Paris, it's not <laughs> Lyon, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not Cairo, just Geneva. It's not Riyadh. Not Jeddah or yeah. Riyadh. So actually, if we compare it to the, to the nuclear power plants, mm -hmm. what we have in Hungary, we have uh, four uh, 450 megawatts uh, reactor, so it's half a reactor. This is not a big deal. Actually, there are some some rumors and and uh, um, uh, discussions that we have a dedicated nuclear power plant, mm -hmm. or we have uh, anything else. No, we are one of the consumers of the French uh, network grid, uh, and 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 we 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 buy the same electricity as uh, as everybody else. I hope not at the same price, but that's a different story, but <laughs> yeah. not for the example. And, and that includes everything, not only the detectors, accelerators, yep. it includes the servers that we have, and yes. we have plenty and, of them. And the cryogenics that we need. Yeah, yeah. so. Okay, um, back to here. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. Uh, are there considerations for the grid when the experiments are going? To what? Sorry. Are there? Uh, I I know the answer because we we had to deal with it this uh, this uh, this fall due to the um, network probably shortages uh, mm. power shortages that we expected here in Europe. So indeed, this 200 megawatts is not a big deal. So the French uh, electric network can serve it. However, if there are huge problems in Europe, if, if many power uh, uh, plants uh, fall out, then uh, we have to reduce our consumption. We have a special agreement with the French network provider that in this case, uh, we can reduce our power consumption to really to the minimum. We can stop uh, parts of the accelerator. We had several scenarios. Uh, in order to maintain the physics in the LHC as long as we can. But of course, don't forget that the CERN is not creating GDP in the sense as, as for example, any other uh, 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 industrial partners do. So this is the, the smallest cut on the society if we have to stop. So I think we are, we are all ready to sacrifice a little bit of, of, uh, of this in order to keep the society running uh, yes we have a we have agreement and and we we have uh, several scenarios how to scale down the okay i think we can we can uh, let shaima to 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 move i will give her uh, so here we are still in minus two and in minus two level, uh, there is, um, uh, it's divided in two places. So here with the camera, you can see how, uh, I think you cannot see the top. We are like uh, eight, uh, 70 meter uh, underground. Uh, so now let me try to show you how is the shuffle. This, uh, how we can uh, down, uh, down stir, uh, like down stairs, um, the, the, some, some uh, detectors or sub detectors. And uh, if you go, you can go down, you can show them down because it's already open now, because now we are in a technical stop. So here we can see down stairs where we can, uh, if we wanted to, to download, I can see from here also the, 
the one the, 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 the one we use for gem detector for now. Shaima, why don't you go in uh, through this little slot? I think it is quite inconvenient. I... <laughs> Sorry. So, so, uh, so here, um, here we can see, I think maybe uh, Zoltan also have more time to explain this better than me. Uh, here we can see some uh, uh, historical photo about how they construct the, uh, the place to host the LHC. Actually, it was ready before for the uh, lab experiment, but uh, they started to have uh, more extra uh, so it, uh, it was Lepton uh, uh, Collider and the LHC is a Hadron Collider. So, and they uh, figure out some uh, problems during uh, digging the, the land to host this uh, um, huge detector. Uh, so actually uh, we didn't pass by the, the construction hall, but we can say here that uh, uh, we will see the machine, the accelerator downstairs, we will go inside. But uh, uh, it's good to mention for you that all of these detectors are, uh, so it's a, a kind of wheels, around 15 wheels, and they are co uh, constructed on the surface. And then we, it's uh, through the big uh, shuffle, we, uh, uh, the scientist and engineer uh, down, uh, down stir them by using the uh, special cranes. And then uh, it's constructing again, it's collected uh, down the stair. So we have to go uh, inside because we have also another group of visitors here. So we will go again uh, inside the counting room. You can uh, switch off. So here we pass by uh, different tracks, two different tracks. I will just mention, and then Abdullah can uh, explain for you more than me in this because this is his work actually. So this kind of racks we call it the data acquisition uh, racks and uh, the trigger racks. Uh, so I will let uh, I just show you these racks which we use for uh, reducing the data. Uh, Abdullah can go ahead after I, in the time when I go to the UXC. So, and also for some, uh, uh, for some uh, detectors here, we need some uh, high voltage uh, to keep away from the detector. Uh, so we host them in these tracks for the power system. You can go. I... So this kind of detector is used to power uh, some dete gas detectors especially, and uh, because they are far. So now we are still in the USC side, which is service. So we give the service for the actual detector inside uh, in the UXC. This why we keep this uh, kind of, uh, of racks here, because during the run, we cannot access the UXC because of the radiation. Uh, uh, then if anything happened, we don't need to go inside fastly. We can, the expert of course, and the technician can go down, downstairs here and maintain, keep some maintenance and keep the work going on and to be sure that we deliver a good data for physics to analyze and give us a new physics results or uh, test our models, the physics uh, models. So now we will go down the stair to the, the down place uh, where our uh, uh, beloved CMS uh, lay uh, on, the, on the bottom. So we'll, uh, I think we will take a rest with Abdullah to explain for you uh, how, uh, how much data we get and how we reduce it. Okay, go ahead, Abdullah. Okay, thank you, Shayma. Uh, so basically, as Shayma said, Basically, it's a CMS is a, a collection of uh, sensors and detectors. We call them sub detectors. And these detectors, just think about any, especially if you are computer engineering or electronics students, uh, when you do some readout from a sensor and then you digitize the readout and the whole thing. But this is on a very, 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 very large scale. Uh, more than 14,000 tons of equipment. So basically, inside the detector, in a collision, there are more than 40 million collisions that happens in a second. 
and for a single event that we record that we read out from these equipments as you see it from the lives that uh, Shayma showed us uh, we read depending on the configuration that we have from uh, half a megabyte to two megabytes so of data for each uh, event and this is a very very large data rate and the reason uh, we have these equipments is basically to act as a, a filter uh, we call it a level one filter or a level one trigger basically from the first 40 million we take only around 100,000 uh, events so the equipments that we uh, that you've seen in the racks and other from other sites also they basically uh, have some kind of thresholds. They are programmed in some energy thresholds or physics uh, 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 algorithms and so on, statistical algorithms that basically filter out uh, the data that we uh, don't think is important. And the reason we do that, why we don't uh, store all the data, it is inefficient, uh, even if we have the uh even if we have the technology to store it it will be uh, more than 99 percent of the data is useless uh, and we only care about very small fraction of the data I'm sorry for removing uh, your yeah. picture yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, shima just just show the pictures uh, while abdullah is, is talking okay yes, so, <laughs> so uh you are very lucky because now we are in the UXC where our uh, detector, I, ca I, I think you can imagine by uh, uh, just to look to, the, uh, to our technician working, how they are appear very small related to, relative to the big uh, detector. Uh, I, 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 I don't have a pointer, but I will try to uh, explain for you uh, the kind of detector. So. Ah, Pointers yes. have just okay. been banned at CERN. So. Oh, okay, yeah, science, I forget it. So I will uh, explain in the camera with, um, oh, with yeah. Naomi. So here, uh, so here you can see this uh, beam, uh, uh, proton beam. This, uh, the, this is um, the tube where the proton go, go inside. And then this yellow bar actually is high as the, uh, the ECAL and the, the, the tracking system. So inside this yellow bar, there is a tracking system, the tracker, which is semiconductor detectors and the ECAL, which is electromagnetic calorimetry. And as you know, that calorimetry meaning that it measures the energy of the particle. And they are also, and then also there is another kind, but we cannot see it from here, the HCAL. What you see, the silver bar around this uh, yellow bar is the, the super, the super uh, uh, solenoid magnet, which is like, this is like the miracle of the CMS uh, that uh, help us and to achieve the, the good measurement and the very precise measurement of mayon. And the outside you see this red plus uh, silver thing. Actually, this is different. Actually, there are four kinds of uh, gas detector uh, used in the CMS. And what you see, the red bar actually it's not a detector, it's the iron yoke. So the gas detector is installed between this iron rock. And the, uh, what uh, we can, uh, I, I forgot to say that uh, this solenoid magnet is provided uh, around for Tesla, which is like more than 60 million uh, uh, magnetic field of uh, the Earth. So uh, this is, you can imagine, this is the, the highest magnetic field uh, we can find on, the, on our planet. And this is why we, uh, we use it to just binding the particles and then we can uh, measure. So uh, as you see here, it's open. So this nose actually here, we, there is kind of uh, uh, different kind, but we cannot see them because they are behind this uh, silver foil. Yes, and then uh, you see here, if you can go uh, the, this side, actually this kind of gas detectors, it's a mix between the RPC and DC, and DC. Uh, we cannot see uh, the, the other, the, um, the, the, no, this, this is a CSC and the, uh, RPC. We cannot see uh, the DT from here. So this, uh, yes, this in this side is the DT, you can see also. 
So it's a kind of all of these gas detectors, and this has helped us to uh, use the, to the, for the detection of main, because as we know that the main is very, uh, have a very high penetrating power, and, uh, and there is many technologies and the studies we, uh, that the, the scientists use, and also with the helping of engineering, we can build such a kind of beautiful. Actually, I am, I am, I'm really, when I am staying here and to see how these blue cables are arranged, it, it's like you are drawing uh, uh, a really nice uh, uh, draw, drawing for something systematic. Uh, uh, so here also we can go. Uh, for these racks, actually for some electronics, when, you know, when we have this broken-broken uh, uh, broken interaction, and then the particles coming out, they will interact with the material of the different detectors. But the output will be uh, an electrical signal. So, but this electrical signal is very small. And so we need uh, some small, so we need to work hard to keep this uh, very small uh, electrical signal. So we need to uh, have the, uh, also to power the electronics that keep uh, to deliver this electronic signal. And then it reduce the data delivered to the computing. Uh, so this rack hosting the, the power system for all the detectors that uh, uh, need for the electronics of each detector. So there's two kinds of, of a power system uh, used in the C and in, in H. Actually, it is it is the same for each experiment in uh, in CERN or this big uh, 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 big experiment. So it's very nice also to see how now we are because we are in the technical stop. You see that uh, different teams work is uh, and they have to work in uh, with the optimal uh, uh, time and uh, to be very efficient to measure uh, uh, to to measure what what's needed to be to be done and do it in the very uh, uh, um, like what we say we, it's a, like a clean way and a nice way and to keep, because everything makes a difference in a measurement because as i said that when we reduce the signal it will be very tiny then now we, we have also a chance to, to go down the stair to see how the it's it's really big and also i think audience can take a photo with this uh, with this machine and how you you see the, how this wheels is coming imagine how it was hard also to go, to come from uh, zero level to minus 100 meter down the stair it was really really uh, not easy to do this but the engineers do it uh, and uh, and you see you can see, uh, I think you can see the wheels here, this uh, orange wheels where, yes, exactly. So you can see here that the detector is already carried by this orange stages when we, and there is a rail, we will see down the stair, I yeah, think. Let's go down the stair. We can see the rail where uh, the detector, the, the slice of the detectors or the wheels can be moved. And uh, actually, when it moves, it's not like a bicycle. It's just uh, like uh, we uh, it's uh, move like one millimeter by one millimeter because it's very heavy. I think Sarah already told you how how much it is uh, heavy. So you see here these rails actually where the detector. I think you can see also from here how it's uh, this green and orange part can move. And then, but uh, when this, uh, and the, also something is uh, it's good to uh, to mention here, we cannot enter here uh, just after uh, stopping the, the proton beam. We have to wait. And also this is a, uh, is a task for our safety and protection, uh, radiation safety and protection uh, team that to measure and scan everywhere. And if it's not safe, uh, you cannot see us here or each one uh, inside the cover. This is uh, the cover for the UXC. And as you see, it's really long. And also there is also down the stair, some, some mechanical and uh, some stairs. So it's really a big, uh, a big uh, challenge to uh, do such an experiment. And uh, maybe we forgot to tell you why it's a state compact. 
you see that is you see it's very huge but if if you compare uh about how much material inside this detector so you can see i i i cannot see even the top from here so it's very huge and imagine this like a cylinder and is this cylinder like 30 meter uh, length and uh, 15 meter diameter and it contains more than 14,000 tons of material like it's really compact it's, and then and then if we compare it the volume by atlas experiment for example it is uh, it's really small uh, the cms but uh, uh, with this stuff uh, nice facilities and uh, nice technology we can uh, do Emma? our job yes okay. uh, i want to add uh, an information uh, yes. about what you just yes, said yes. so um, uh, as Shayma mentioned, the TMS is compact and uh, it's about 14,000 tons of, uh, of material. However, for example, Atlas is uh, approximately uh, half the mass of a CMS, it's 7,000 um, tons. However, it's way bigger, it's uh, 25 uh, meters in height and in width, uh, while the CMS is only 15. Uh, meters in height and in width, so uh, CMS is really literally compact. And um, also uh, concerning the process of lowering the uh, slices of CMS, I also want to mention that the largest uh, slice, let's say, uh, was uh, about 2,000 tons and it was really difficult to lower it down uh we had only like 10 centimeters uh, clearance between uh, this uh, slice and the shaft so it took approximately 12 hours to uh to low to lower this uh, instead of the 20 seconds yeah sorry it, it would fly down if let the gravity do the job but uh, <laughs> no we can't just surrender <laughs> So yes, uh, it uh, it was really a hard work building uh, this uh, amazing uh, detector. Yeah. Uh, the so, floor goes back to you, Shema. Okay. So as you see now, but uh, I also forgot to mention that now because we are in a technical stop, there is no magnetic field. So because this magnet I mentioned, it's electric, it's superconducting material, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's it's uh, a mag electrical magnet. It's not like a, nor a natural magnet. So uh, when we have this shutdown, we cannot open uh, the, the the CMS experiment with the magnet on. So now we uh, we can feel uh, there is no magnetic field. Otherwise, if there is a magnet, there is a place where the magnetic field. Yeah, it's the remnant. Okay, so we can go there to see the magnet. Ah, oh, the remnant of magnetic field. Yes. We can see here. No, it's nothing. To, yes, see. This is the effect of the, this is the residual magnetic field because this is metal, as I say, this is iron yoke. So you can see after even now the, the magnet is off, but still you see it's deflected according to the magnetic field uh, uh, remnant on the iron yoke. So you can imagine. Uh, yeah, but we have to, we have to confess that we are cheating in the sense that this is, uh, we, we, we we try to attach these paper clips rather to the edge of the the this uh, iron slab where the the magnetic field is the strongest this is extremely weak field now this yes, is as exactly. shima said this is the the uh, remnant field in the in these uh, iron slabs uh, yes I... so actually there is nothing used in it, uh, is in it now except that on this surface this is a very nice flat surface uh, which uh, uh, is appealing to work on from my laptop, but my laptop turns off due to this, this field. So that's the only use of this field that I cannot use it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, once we turn on the magnet at these edges that the uh, Shima is showing, we get something like half a Tesla and we can have, uh, we can uh, demonstrate the fields, not only with these paper clips, but rather spanners. Yes, uh, with the screws. <laughs> with screws, spanners, uh, <laughs> large objects, and they can really stick on these these uh, objects. That's a completely different. Even your uh, safety oh. shoes. Uh, 
some of the safety shoes, the steel, steel toe yeah. ones uh, might stick yeah, on. Stick, yeah. yeah, Shaima, go ahead. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Uh, no, no, nothing. I'm just uh, because I lost uh, you sometimes. So I'm wondering if you speak about uh, how fancy uh, this detector work. So I can give uh, some uh, idea for the students. The fashion about physics is for you, Shaima. Yeah, yeah and I have, a, I have okay. a, a slide for you, Shaima. Uh, let me just uh, add it next to you. Uh, you know what is on it. This is the it famous is... detection graph. Uh, okay, uh, okay. You know it by heart, I will show them. Okay, so as I mentioned, there is uh, we have actually four main four layers for the detector, as I refer to. So I say that inside this blue bar, as uh, this is yellow bar, there is actually three ki uh, two kinds of detectors, but three ki three layers of the detector. So we have uh, the first is the tracker system, which is pixels. Yeah, and the and the strips. It's the semiconductor detectors, and you know that uh, semiconductor detectors is known by the highest resolution, uh, space resolution for the particle. And the, it's a chosen for this because in the after the collision, it will be a huge uh, kind, a, a huge number of uh, very tiny particles and a very very large tracks. It will be constructed. The tracker is used for uh um for measurement of the, the the charge of the particle and the momentum the charge because when the charge hits each layer so it is as you see in the picture uh zoltan show it's a, a, a each point refer that to hit of the charged particle inside the the tracker but uh, we can see that uh, one line is continuous. It's not really clear in this uh, photo, but uh, uh, let's uh, uh, want to say that uh, neutral particle, or uh, we here we speak about photons or particles. I mean, both are the same in high energy uh, level. So in the tracker, it's used to uh, measurement of the charge, uh, charged particles, of course, and also for uh, measurement of the vertex, which is like this is we I say that we have a bunches of protons and it's only one uh, one interaction of this bunch is considered like this is the interaction, the real interaction. This is like this is the spot of the of the interaction, but it should be the center of the detector. But sometimes it's not exactly the center, like just a few very, very few uh, millimeter away. And then we have the, the calorimetry, which used for the measurement of energy. And we have the ECAL, it's coming from the electromagnetic uh, calorimetry. So it's clear it measures the electromagnetic particles, which means photons or electrons. And then the second, it's like onion shape. And then the, the layer that you see in the figure, it's uh, the ECAL, it's a green bar. And then there is a, um, a layer of the hadronic calorimeter which we have hadrons like protons and neutrons, the kions, this kind of, uh, so hadrons like very baryons or mesons. And then these three layers is surrounding by the, uh, the mainly by this, uh, because there is also some of the HCAL outside the solenoid, but the main part of the, this uh, detectors is already inside the magnetic field. And the magnetic field is like used to bind uh, to uh, to bend the, the 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 charged particle track, and then as you see this blue uh, particle bath for the particle is actually this is a mayon, and the mayon can escape all these internal layers of detectors, and they also escape the the solenoid and they go inside the main system, and really the gas detectors do the best thing that for the detection and best measurement for the main uh, track, uh, because they are, as I say, they are, yes, they are all uh, gas detectors, but there is four kinds of uh, different technology and the gas mixing. Here we can say also thank you to the team work on the gas mixtures and uh, because they, uh, they work a lot to provide the, uh, the, the correct percentage for, of uh, different gases used in these uh, detectors. 
also uh, here as you as uh, you see this is huge material and the electronics the detectors this also needs some cooling and for that also there is a cooling a team working just for cooling to keep this uh, uh, detectors performance uh, going as optim optimal value and to keep everything in the in the natural condition this is safe for the detector for persons and for the environment i think we can uh, go uh, upstairs if you, anyone have a question we can uh, go well, we have a question actually about not about the detector, but about summer internships for physics students. Uh, and I would like to say that, yes, uh, there is the well-known uh, summer student uh, program uh, uh, by, yes. by, by CERN. And actually, the deadline for it is 30th of January, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and uh, let's to say also, Abdullah, put my voice with you that till, as I know, that till now, uh, almost there is no application coming from Saudi Arabia, so uh, they yes. can apply. Yeah, I, I think I have the numbers here, but yeah, Saudi Arabia unfortunately was the, among uh, the lowest. Well, it was zero from Bahrain, so I can. Yeah, uh, and by <laughs> my advice is uh, it's not only so it's uh, from physics point of view, I would recommend the students apply to be after the third level of uh, studying in bachelor uh, uh, level. So master student, of course, they can uh, work. And actually, it's not only physicists, engineers also can apply. Yes, exactly. That's what I wanted to say. So uh, engineers, uh, physics, uh, computing, uh, uh, disciplines, they all can apply to the CERN uh, summer student program. Maybe we can share the link uh, in the chat can or the maybe link? send it by you. Yes, we can. Yes, of course. Uh, I have it here. I think it's friend of CH. Yes, I, I, think, I think also uh, uh, something important um, to say about this summer students, they actually, they work um, really oh, in the real um, data and the near, uh, in the labs so they can share and they can have uh, a project or, or also or on this. Okay. Okay. You can type. Uh, the other thing is everywhere. also uh, Saudi Arabia also can, uh, can ask for the training, for training some, uh, uh, some students on and they can pay for them. So now we are done in minus three. There is actually, we just, just to correct something, there is actually nine students registered. From no, students. yes, yes. This is what I say that Saudi Arabia, there is no, I think there is no one applied uh, till now. No, no, nine, nine. There are nine, nine yeah, nine students. Yeah. So I, this is my, my, my fault. It's I checked last week. <laughs> so you, you still have time. Yes, they have, and uh, we really encourage uh, students to come here. It's not a theoretical training. It's really you are working together with a scientist, with engineers, and you can choose uh, which uh, which which field you yes, want to study. Yes. If it's computing, it is uh, engineering, it is physics. You can choose what you want, and also you can, uh, of course, do. Uh, a master study and PhD, of course, you can uh, by you joining your the the CMS team or CERN team at your uh, university. I think, uh, of course, the, the university of Kaust is already a member, so they can uh, ask uh, Oliga, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I just shared the link in the chat for everyone. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Last last year, I think we have uh, three students from Saudi Arabia. They are really excellent and uh, good students. So now we go upstairs. So go. Okay. So now probably uh, you are coming to the surface now. Yes. Sir. Yes. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you want well, to go on to the way up, We don't choose. So. Oh, the way down the oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the peculiarity of the of how the mobile networks uh, make the roaming on downstairs we have swiss network yeah. on on the surface we have yeah. french network this is this is really you strange. Can see. 
how the sorry, way... Zoltan. And they and can the... uh, see how. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, so, so, so now we yeah. are in the elevator, uh, and yeah. we are coming up, and the, uh, uh, here uh, Naomi show us how we are going up. Meter. We are in minus two. We are in minus one. It's a uh, eighty-two meter uh, underground, and we'll go to zero level again. So we'll come uh, just to prepare our your question, and you have Zoltan, Abdullah, and Sarah can answer. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, while you come up the stairs, uh, I would like to continue yeah. uh, speaking about the data taking. Uh, so you seen down the equipment, and uh, I already spoke about the level one trigger, which takes the around 40 million collisions and only select 100,000 of them. And actually then sends them upstairs to the server room just above our head. It's called the high level trigger or the second level trigger, which then selects from <clears throat> uh, the 100,000 events only 1,000 events, and then send them to be stored at the, we call the uh, level zero, uh, where they are stored uh, by CERN, and then they are sent also to other levels, level one, we call them level one, uh, where more analysis to the data is happening and so on. And uh, these level ones are actually supercomputing uh, centers around the world. Uh, we call them the grid. You can search about it. Uh, some have a very nice site uh, about uh, their computing grid. Uh, so uh, many uh, supercomputing centers around the world con contribute some of their computing power to process CERN's uh, data. And then we also have level two. Uh, Lebanon just became the first uh, level two uh, center uh, in our region in the Middle East. <clears throat> uh, and I think uh, uh, KAUST have a very good uh, opportunity to become the first uh, level one, perhaps. <laughs> this is Shayma here. Hello. I was just uh, trying to get uh, cows to contribute some of their uh, Shaheen uh, processing power to CMS, perhaps. <laughs> and uh, you're already, I think, in the procurement process for Shaheen 3. So uh, hopefully uh, we can collaborate uh, by sending some uh, CMS data uh, on your way. Or, uh, 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 processing <clears throat> and uh, uh, yes, uh, we have plenty of projects as you have here seen in physics, uh, engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, cooling, and uh, safety engineering, and so on. Also, computing is a very important part uh, for this. Now, uh, our uh, Filter farm has also is equipped also with GPUs, so we have a heterogeneous uh, computing environment. We are using uh, GPUs to the process the data and do the data analysis. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you are interested in mechanical engineering, physics, uh, HPC, uh, even uh, web development. Uh, Sarah works on some web development yes. applications for uh, for what? <laughs> <laughs> for the computing team. So my my project. She wants me to tell you a brief summary about it. Um, I'm working on a tool that's used in CMS. It's a web management tool uh, called ICMS. So uh, of course we are a team working on several aspects in this uh, project, but. For my part, I work on ICMS statistics, which is a web page where we can get some interesting uh, statistics uh, about um, personnel in CERN, about the project, about, for example, the PhD um, applications or whatever. So it's really uh, interesting uh, to have uh, these numbers. For example, how many women do we have working on uh, CMS or how many um, engineers or physicists from the Arab countries, for example, uh, are in uh, CMS. So uh, yes, for example, I'm a full stack developer 
and my team i work both on front end and back end parts and uh, i'm just like a drop in an ocean uh, <laughs> this field is very huge and we have uh, different uh, disciplines and different types of engineers working uh, at Fern. And I think uh, in this occasion, it's good to mention that uh, the WWW, the World Wide Web, was actually born at CERN. So CERN didn't only um, contribute in physics, uh, in uh, physics discoveries, but also uh, in other fields, uh, like, for example, the World, uh, the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. Also here, we can also say that uh, at, if we speak about CERN, it's not only about the LHC experiments, the four experiments, we have also uh, small experiments, uh, but they are important, uh, for example, like uh, uh, nuclear physics uh, for medical application for uh, like you, I think uh, latest thing it was like the 3D, the color, the 3D X-ray. Uh, that will be used for scanning, medical scanning, there is a proton therapy, and also for astrophysics, there are some small experiments and this experiments for uh, and antimatter as well. So there is a big, uh, it, 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 so each facility of CERN, as can be, pen, the physicist can benefit from them, it's also the society can uh, get benefit. Uh, regarding the physics analysis in uh, in CMS or in CERN uh, about LHC experiments, uh, they are focused in uh, elementary particle physics uh, almost. So uh, we need to understand how the our universe evolved uh, after the Big Bang, and if we understand how it ev uh, evolved, we can understand where we are going. <laughs> And uh, this has happened not like uh, we are like taking the photos you see in the uh, event display, but it's like uh, what we explain about the, uh, the analyzing the data. But we have already like uh, we testing the, the theories already added. So we have two kinds of, uh, of analysis in physics. So we have models, the say theoretical physicists put the models and they, they say that uh, you should see uh, this event or this measurement at a, at this energy. So we try in CERN in each experiment we try to create first the uh, the condition uh, for how our universe looks like after the Big Bang, and then we with the studying this condition so we create a, the a state of matter looks like what. It's, it was after the just after the Big Bang, and then we use the detectors to measure measure how they are they they behave and how they interact by studying this thing because the theorist is already uh, um, put uh, the assumption of existence of this particle. We study and then we compare what we have as an experimentalist with what they say as a theorist and. The, of course, we have the we can't trust only the nature. So this is our like free refree, and it's never gave mistakes. So uh, we can by this we can accept theories or reject or modify. The other thing is by looking for new physics or new uh, phenomena that we uh, we don't have any explanation about. It. Then we say for the theorist, okay, uh, our uh, uh, physicist, please. Uh, we see this uh, uh, this behavior of matter. Can, could you please explain for this? And for that, we always, as a physicist, have to compare the what we see in the experiment with what we have in the theory. And this is done also uh, by the Monte Carlo simulation, by simulation program. And for this, also for this uh, simulation and gen event generators, we need a computing. A, a, a very big computing. I think Abdullah gave you really the the best dose of computing. So it's about really it is uh, certainly is uh, is not only physics. It's not only uh, engineer. It's really uh, it's like a small uh, country, and it's what we cannot. I mean, we cannot ignore any contribution in, from anyone. Uh, I guess uh, this field of particle physics is really interesting because uh, you see really how very 
it's like it looks like the galaxy on the small scale so you can see what is the the, the same laws uh, are satisfied for the large galaxies it's the same laws that for work for the very small uh, uh, elementary particles we have a, a lot a lot a lot of studies and the, there is a lot of open questions we didn't answer yet and we need you as a young to ask. Uh, to, uh, to to really start to, to look with us because you were uh, the, the future for you of course so uh, uh, if anyone has a, I think also there is a communication from CERN. Usually we have the YouTube channels, we have the Facebook, Instagram, and all social media. I think there is a group for this. And I think you can also go for the website of CERN. You can find a lot you will be, you, you like or love. I mean, each of you, I think he or she will find what they look for. Shema, are there any questions? Yes, please feel free to uh, drop any questions. You have questions. Uh, I work on uh, GPUs, so we, from Run3, we are using GPUs to our uh, reconstruction algorithms. I work on porting them, and currently we are working on tuning some of the, the GPU programs, kernels. Uh, also exploring uh, the field of performance portability because as I said we have multiple sites around uh, the world each with different uh, hardware and different accelerators and we'd like our uh, program uh, to run as uh, fast as possible on all the, all the sites uh, and Almost all what we do is open source. You can search for uh, CMSSW, which is on GitHub. Uh, so between GitHub and GitLab, you can find uh, everything. Uh, yeah. That and we all the use. publication and open access. Yes, and and yeah, uh, CERN is a big contributor to open science. Uh, all publications is as simple as it is. Uh, yeah. Are there any questions? Okay, maybe we can conclude uh, this webinar for today. Uh, thank you so much to the CERN team for this opportunity to discover CERN online. And thank you everyone for attending this. It has been a wonderful afternoon. Um, if you have found this uh, visit interesting, you can also uh, visit the Indico page of the event, the website and the YouTube platform of CERN and let's hope this can inspire us to continue more and contribute to excellent science. Thank you all very much. Bye. Thanks. Thank Have you. a nice Thank afternoon. So ciao, ciao. Bye.